jet flying over, causing me to look up and see that black halo is around the sun again. Not black, but dark. It was overcast earlier today. That's burned off, but there's this dark corona around the sun. This is a series of flash images that I had this morning. Um, let's see, what happened right before that? It was... I know what it was. So I was trying to... I was made to sleep, but not sure why. I can't recall any dreams, but feel the cliff incident is in here. Why is this incident so important? Who was behind it and why did they do it? Why was I permitted to survive and make it back to safety? So um, that is something I've been trying to figure out. First of all, why they did it in the first place, now that I know that it was a... Um, manufactured incident, mind control incident, and then why they put me out on that cliff and then like, and then I kind of came to consciousness at the, that, in the middle of it, and then I was able to make myself, my way back to safety, although it was difficult. I was on like a tiny little ledge somehow, I had just climbed out there in a trance. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I just landed on a tree and knocked a pine cone down. I hope you're not directly above me. There's a drone coming up out in there. So, um... I sort of speculated on that for a little bit. And then... I kind of closed my eyes and I got an image. And so then when an image came to me, it would just be for a few seconds, a second or two, and I'd wake up and write it down. And this is a series of images that came to me. The first one said, was a weird image of a woman with a long, tawny, blonde hair, aviator style sunglasses, maybe a jumpsuit. Makes me think of Jamie Summers, the bionic woman. So later on, I went to the internet and I looked up Jamie Summers and bionic woman, and sure enough, um, something I did not remember about that show is that she supposedly was injured in a parachute jump. That might explain maybe they thought if I fell and broke my limbs and things like that, that, you know, maybe they would do something. <laughs> but I was already at that point implanted and everything, but maybe, you know, because I was the same, about the same age, and it was a very similar situation to what Brett was in when Brett was hurt including the LSD, so it was going to be a twin incident to Brett, obviously, if I had fallen. But more than that, Jamie Summers, I feel like, is partly based on my mother. Like, she's a tennis player, and there's a lot of things about her that remind me of my mom or make me think that um, she's supposed to represent my mom in some way so my mother I'm sure has um, you know computer chips in her body as well so that makes my daughter the third generation at least I mean I do think my grandmother in fact I know my grandmother was implanted I don't know at what point she was implanted but when my when I was taking care of my grandmother she had neck pain that was um, I've had since then and I now recognize it as being totally implant generated so they were torturing a 91-year-old uh, woman with neck implants, my grandmother. These people are depraved as hell. In any case, so that would then make my daughter the fourth. So the grandmother, my mother, me, and my daughter all implanted. That makes my daughter the fourth generation that's implanted in this way. I don't know, like I say, I don't know when my grandmother was implanted, but I think my mother's been implanted since the 1970s at least, and I certainly have been since the 70s.
And the more they do it, as they do this to generation after generation, the more entitled they seem to feel to do this. It's like a, it's just like, you know, uh, chattel slavery. You know, it's just that instead of going by the color of our skin, they're doing they're doing it in a different manner. It's like somehow doing something to someone to make them seem different from a normal person. It's just it's an arbitrary thing. It's just as arbitrary as skin color is. But it's a psychological thing. It's getting people to think of you as if you're different and you're somehow not as human as other people. And um, people shouldn't be fooled by this kind of thing. Okay, and then the phrase comes to me, and it's, this is like a woman's voice, and I can't remember exactly the tone, but it was a weird kind of tone. Adding up is deadly, something like that. Something like that. Then the next vision was a pair of what looked like my first pair of glasses in third grade. So it was these small green glasses and that's then that caused me to remember or perhaps was linked to a memory or another memory was given to me or sent my way of my grandmother. Um, so my grandmother tended to have little stories that she told over and over and one of them was of when my mother got her first pair of glasses and she saw a man with a checked coat and she said to my grandma, I can see every check on his coat. So the checked coat represents the game and Freemasonry. So what this is telling me is that, you know, I mean, you can see it as a game if you want, but it's it's another form of chattel slavery, but it's this covert, high-tech um, sex trafficking is what it really is, under the guise of a quote-unquote game. Okay, then the next image is um, an image of two women kissing each other, like passionately kissing each other, and one has dark hair, maybe some strips of blue in her hair. Then I get a little phrase from a song from the 80s. Uh, this song I think is called Too Shy, or Too Shy to Shy, Hush Hush Eye to Eye. So later on I looked that up and it looks like it, um, what they're basically talking about is a grooming process. I mean, in, in the context of all this other stuff, what it is is it's a sexual grooming process. This song came out when I was 15 years old. So it was when I was 15 years old that I started getting approached by guys. And one of the first guys that approached me was a Hungarian, German, Hungarian or something like that. Um, and... Um, then I kind of had a crush on another older German guy, and I just think these crushes and things like that were um, externally manipulated. And then Mike Payne came into my life a year later. So this was a, like I said, sexual grooming process. And had it not been part of a sex process, trafficking process, it would not have been so harmful, but it was actually sex trafficking. And I think what they're saying is this is what they're doing with my daughter. And my daughter has um, stayed pretty chaste. She hasn't had a boy, you know, she hasn't had a boyfriend the past five years that we've been separated from each other. But now she has a boyfriend. And um, my big question right now is what's this person about? How much is he complicit in this? How much does he know? How much is he involved? How much is he obligated? One of the things about him is he has many family members who have been killed or died of um, cancer and things like that, which to me is a red flag that something's going on with his family. It just doesn't make sense for somebody to lose their entire family like that. But I see it, I see it more often in Native American families. But I now see that it seems to be linked to all of this. There's another jet, just like the last one. causing me to look over here and see the Z shape in the sky. I don't know how to interpret the Z shape in the sky.
so the thing about the glass is that, you know, I guess I see more lesbian sex stuff. And I hear the phrase, I'm going to walk her into weapons down here. Now, obviously that got my attention because that was done to me also. A couple different times. So, um, what the hell is that about? They're going to do that to my daughter, too? Then I see an image of a square-faced dog, like a cardboard dog on a game board. So, um, this probably relates to that walking dog, that kind of thing, of where somebody gives an order to this entity, whatever the dog is, and that entity feels like it needs to carry out those orders, even if they're, um you know, like, anything, which is total insanity. Um, the thing about, so I kind of, it, I've kind of caught on to the idea that my <clears throat> vision might have been externally manipulated. Certainly my childbirth seems to have been externally ma manipulated. My, my own birth was externally manipulated. Um, I think my daughter had cousins who were killed in utero, externally. Umbilical cords wrapped around their necks. Um, so, I think that there is... I think that they can also um, manipulate puberty. And change um, secondary sex characteristics. So... Um, I've seen that alluded to in movies, you know, this idea of let's choose a, you know, a female avatar or something like that with giant breasts or something like that, those kinds of things. And, um, so it's just one of the many things I think that they can manipulate. And it's possible that, he, that this goes back to my mom's era, to my mom having, because my brother doesn't have nearsightedness like I do. Um, my father is nearsighted and my mother is nearsighted, but it's possible that my mother wasn't naturally nearsighted because I don't think my mom's, no, my mom's sister, I'm not sure, but my grandma n never wore glasses. Um, so there's some, I think that that's what, one of the things that's going on is that we, our physical bodies are being manipulated as we grow, you know, hormones and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's really important for us to get out of the system.